Praise the Lord, everyone. Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe that you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. Who believes that this morning? Amen. At this time, we're going to hand it over to the pastor for a few announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can do a little better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I know you look around, you see a lot of people out today for the holiday. Amen. So I do ask that you keep them lifted up in your prayers for their safe travel. Uh, you guys know what the roads are like around the holidays. A lot of drivers that are not always as safe as they should be. So pray for everybody's safe return. I also would like you to be in prayer for uh, the Welch family. Uh, Karen and, and Sam are not here today. They were they planned on going out of town. I don't even know if they went out of town or not because Brother Todd last Sunday was attacked uh, by a man on his job and has been in and out of the hospital uh, ever since. Uh, they damage to his, I believe, his spleen, internal bleeding. Uh, they had been going to do a surgery and have not done surgery yet, but he is still in the hospital right now. So let's lift him up in, in prayers. And uh, if, if you're here wondering, because I had some blank stares this morning. If you're wondering why you didn't know anything about this, see my wife and get put on the uh, the prayer list so you can get that email and know what's going on. Amen? Amen. It's tight, but it's right. If you if you want to know about it, you need to pray about it, get on the list. Amen? Amen. Also, uh, remember Toby Glass. Brother, uh, Brother Toby is still in the hospital. They are uh, prepping him and trying to get him uh, prepared and ready health-wise so that he can go on the heart transplant list. Um, if, if they can get his A1C where it needs to be, he will be a candidate. He'll go on the list. Uh, but he has been up in his chair. He's been up sitting up, doing doing things. Uh, you know, I mean, you, he, if you go in to see him, he can talk and, and all that's fine. He's just as hard as very weak. But we serve a God that's able to touch him. Amen? Amen. I shared a testimony a Wednesday night. Uh, Brother Dennis, and I'm going to do, briefly touch on, on the prayer list, on, the, on the, the miracle that was done. We had been praying for Brother Dennis because he had melanoma cancer that had spread to his lymph nodes. Amen. Everybody knows that. We've been praying about it. And uh, they had been treating him with, with cancer treatment, and uh, it, it had not, it had spread in, in, you know, in, into more of the lymph node area. And uh, again, we were praying, believing that God was touching him. And he went on the 16th as per the schedule, and he had his lymph nodes uh, all removed. They were all removed below the waist. And when they removed them, they expected um, not only the lymph nodes, but some other tissue that they took out to be cancerous and that it had spread. Uh, now, if you know anything about melanoma, once it spreads from the initial organ, it's bad. It's really bad. The tissues and the, the organs that they took out that they knew had cancer, one, once they run the test on those, those parts, every bit of it came back 100% cancer-free. Amen. Amen. That's, that's a testimony of the power of God, and we, we pray and believe. And I'm going to share, as so as Brother Toby is in the hospital, and we're praying for Brother Toby, believing uh, Sister Bean shared it on a Wednesday night about two weeks ago. Uh, brother, uh, brother Toby's father fell dead. Fell dead from a heart attack. Uh, he was raised up. He was in the hospital, fell dead, pronounced dead, and the Lord raised him up. And he, and, and, and he woke up saying, I've got to keep preaching to these people. Amen. But, you know, on the other hand, his mother fell dead in the altar praying for folks to receive the Holy Ghost. Brother Jonathan Cheetah was in the service when it happened. You never know. God can raise you up or he can take you home. But God has the power to do whatever he wants to do. And we're going to put our trust in Jesus. Amen. 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 Also, uh, remember Tuesday night prayer at 6 p.m. Prayer meeting at 730. Addiction recovery Every Thursday night at 7 p.m. If you have missed, uh, have, have not been in the habit of being there, I want to encourage you to be there. Uh, that's a place that you, you can grow. If, if you need uh, strengthening through addiction recovery ministry, 
We have a tremendous group here in the church that does it. Offering, speaking of offerings, uh, I'm encouraging tithes and offering within the church. Amen. Learn to be a giver. Amen. Uh, if you would like to give, you can do so in the tithing envelopes. You can pick those up in the foyer. You can download the Givelify app and use the app, or you can mail it in to P.O. Box 1111, Columbiana, Alabama. I do want to take a moment right here while we're speaking about giving to encourage the youth that came out yesterday to raise money for missions. If we could give them a hand clap this morning. Amen, amen, amen. They raised yesterday over $200 in a few short hours. So you couple that with the money that was raised last Saturday. They've raised over $600 in, in two Saturdays for mission. So now they have well passed the $2,000 mark that they have raised for Move the Mission. And I'm proud of our young people. Amen. They're starting to get behind the vision, the goal of what's happening. Amen. Move the Mission. Uh, with missions in focus, Sister Bean mentioned it in the adult Sunday school class. I want the church to be in prayer for our missionaries around the world. We just this week had a young missionary couple, husband and wife team in Haiti that were murdered. They were beat to death and shot and killed uh, while conducting a youth service in Haiti. Uh, again, it's tragic, but I'm telling you something that speaks to the, bur the burden that they had. For the things of God, going into dangerous places, knowing the risk, and preaching the word of God. And you think, my goodness, that's going to shut all the missionaries down. That's going to cause everybody to quit. If you'll read your Bible, when Stephen was killed and it was noised abroad and there was persecution in the church, the church was dispersed, but the church grew like fire. Amen. Amen. I really believe that there's about to be a greater revival in Haiti because of what just happened. Amen. Redeemed Radio, every Saturday from 11 to 1, me and my wife will be on there this Saturday. We're looking forward and excited to it, uh, excited about it. Uh, Sunday school attendance, have your kids at Sunday school. I know it's a holiday weekend, a lot of people out, but you get in the normal flow. Get your kids to church. You come in the adult Sunday school class. Also, Vacation Bible School. Let's all shout VBS. June the 6th through the 8th, so it's almost upon us. Anyone who would like to volunteer Please see my wife as soon as possible. Also, camp meeting. Camp meeting is uh, service is coming up June the 19th through the 21st. We will not be having midweek service because the 19th is the first night of camp meeting. I'm encouraging everybody, go to camp meeting. Go to the day services. Go to night services. It is in Pelham at the Pelham Civic Complex. If you don't know where that is, that's where the Birmingham Bulls play. It's and I don't know how cold church is going to be uh, when we're having church. That's a joke. I think they turn the ice off for events like that. If not, we're, we got a lot of blankets in this sanctuary that people bring because they're cold. So, But anyway, everybody make plans to go to camp meeting. And some of you are shaking your head. That's how my brain works. I'm sorry. Uh, also, youth camp, June the 24th through the 28th. That's going to be awesome. Uh, I plan on going. My wife plans on going to chaperones. Teenagers, I want to encourage you to go. You will build memories and you'll build foundations, foundations at camp meeting that will not be built anywhere else. I, last year, while my oldest son was at camp meeting, he sent me a text one night. I don't know. I've never shared this with the church. I don't think I've shared it with my wife. He sent me a text that said, thank you, Dad, for always standing up for the truth of the Word of God and preaching the truth. I'm telling you. You send your kids to camp meeting, send your kids to camp, good word is put in them, and they are called to a place of ministry. Crusaders camp, that's for the younger group, July 8th through the 12th. We've got some chaperones going to that. Uh, we're excited about it. Make sure you have your kids involved in camp. Let's stand together. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to ask the musicians and singers to make their way up this morning. How many of you have come ready to have church today? Come on, let's clap our hands to Jesus. Let's give him a little praise today. Hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad to be at church. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here. Amen. 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 Let's go to him in prayer. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and goodness, all of your many blessings. We ask God that you move in this service today. Lord, touch us by your mighty hand. We give you praise in Jesus, your wonderful name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together today. There is power. 
power, power, want the word be power in the blood of the Lamb. It's power, power, want the word be power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, power, want the word be power in the blood. of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil of victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And pride, there's power. So much power in the blood. Affecting to Calvary's time. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. power to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me ask you this. Some of you have been missing a lot of services and you had the chance to get back today, back to the house of the Lord. It's easy sometimes to 
get in a rut, especially when you've been out of church. You've not been uh, in the presence of the Lord and uh, with the saints and with the body of Christ. And uh, it's easy to come in here and not be a company, a custom, I'm sorry, to letting go of some of the weights you brought in. So before we go any further, I'd like us to lift our hands to the Lord and fill after the Holy Ghost just a moment. I want everybody in the house this morning. Amen. You can come in here with whatever you want to, but lay it down and reach your hands out and touch the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now, God, that you have your way in this service for the rest of the day, God. Lord, every hindrance that would come into the house, God, every spirit that would bring confusion, God, everything that would hinder our mind, we ask now, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you strengthen us. God, let this house be a house of prayer. Oh, Lord, let your power fill this place. We give you praise in the mighty, matchless name of the Lord. Let's worship together. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Just like the day up in Tickcross. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Oh, yes, now. The wind is They came to see what it was all about There was a sound that came down from the upper room Where the Holy Ghost was being poured out It sounded just like the roar of a mighty wind As it fell on every one of them And the wind that blew at Pentecost Praise God, it's blowing again The wind is blowing again The wind is blowing again
I'd like to bring the ushers forward this morning. Amen. I want to thank 
Some for filling in and helping with ushering. As Brother, Char uh, Brother Kevin and Sister Charity out of town this morning. Brother Kevin does such a great job. Amen. But I'm thankful for others that step in when people have to be out of town. They do such a great job. Uh, and before we sing this morning and receive the offering, uh, I'm going to let you know, because it's something new, and I don't want it to, sometimes we do something new, it shocks people. But before we sing this chorus that you have all become very familiar with, we're going to introduce a new old chorus. It's very old, but it's new to you. So just when we do it, just worship with us as we sing. And if we could, let's pray over this offering. We love you, Jesus, today for your, your goodness, God, and your mercy. We ask, Lord, that you bless the offering, God. Lord, that you do everything, God, for your glory and honor. And that's why we are here. And that's why we come bringing offerings today. We ask, Lord, that you anoint it and bless it to further your kingdom, God. And we do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship the Lord today. I need thee. Oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. Just lift your hands around the sanctuary for a moment. Everybody around the sanctuary, let's just tell the Lord we need Him. Tell the Lord that you need Him this morning. I need Thee. Oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. Oh, Bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, God, that never fails. Would you help us worship this morning? Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art called.
you worship the Lord? I'm calling you Savior, Savior, in my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Jesus. 
I love you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Mm. If, if but a moment, could we raise our hands and not look around? And let's just worship the Lord. Oh, I need you every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Lord, I want to feel after you today. I want to feel after you if happily I might find you in this place. If you will, turn with me in your Bibles this morning to Acts chapter 2. And I want to thank the musicians and the singers today. And I want to thank you guys for just bearing with me today. I don't lead service much anymore, but with a lot of people out of town, amen, it, it fell on me today. And I know that I'm not, I know I'm not the best singer. As a matter of fact, um, I do my best singing alone. Amen. But I've learned, to, I've learned to find the anointing of the Lord. Amen. I've learned to find the Spirit of the Lord, and I've learned how to get in the flow of God's anointing. And the only thing that some of you need is just to begin to offer what you do have. Amen. Amen. There's so many times the presence and power of the Lord is there to do whatever you need. But we hinder him because we do not lend ourselves, our talents, our, our will to the Lord. If you'll turn with me, if you're already there, Acts chapter 2 verse 42, and I just got one passage of scripture today, and this is something the Lord's kind of had on my mind the last, uh, the last few days, uh, to be in this vein, and it's not evangelistic, it's not, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's something the Lord has given me to share with the church. Uh, stand for the reading of the word to honor God's word this morning, and I'll read it in your hearing. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. You can be seated. As you're seated, why don't you turn and greet someone this morning. Tell them you're glad they're here. Amen. Tell somebody you're glad to see them. If, uh, if you have not been here in a few weeks, good to see you. And I want you to look around and you see so many people, probably 30 or 40, that are not here today uh, for work and or uh, vacations, miss them, and pray for them. Amen. Pray for them. All right. And I don't really know, really know where to start today. And uh, let, me, let, me just, let me just start here, okay, right or wrong. Um, and I'm going to go somewhere, I promise. I, I promise I'm going to go somewhere. I don't like to be a soapbox preacher. I don't like to be a soapbox teacher. If I see foolishness going on, I usually will wait a few weeks before I teach on it first. Because I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm not trying to call, call anybody out and, be, uh, and embarrass you. I want to build you. I want to strengthen you. And furthermore, um, pastor does not have a huge social media footprint. I do have one. If you went out there looking for me, you could find me. And I do post church things. But let me tell you what I do not do. I don't argue with people on Facebook. I don't do a bunch of goofy things because uh, it only breeds further ignorance and unrighteousness. Amen. And I'm not preaching against social media. I have social media. I'm preaching against what you do on it. And uh, also, I'm not a big fan of casting your pearls before the swine. Anybody ever been around a pig? Amen. You've been around a pig. Now, the, the scripture refers to pearls before the swine. If, you don't, if you've never had a pearl, 
Uh, maybe let's put something else, a nice wristwatch, your brand new wallet, your car keys. Would you lay your car keys down in front of a, a bunch of pigs? No. What are they going to do to it? They're going to stomp all over it. And it doesn't matter to the pig if it's the keys to a, a Datsun or a brand new Mercedes. They're going to treat it the same. Amen. Brother, Brother Nathan spoke last Sunday about people that gladly receive the word. Those are the ones that are going to learn how to worship in spirit and in truth. But you've got to receive the word first. Amen. If they're not receiving the word, they're sure not going to receive it from me when I sit there and argue with them and bicker with them on Facebook. And I'm still going somewhere. And I'm going to show you an example. The pastor, he almost got out of line and I had to get myself back in line. So I posted some pictures. And this is not part, this is just kind of getting to where I want to go. I posted some pictures on Facebook the other day uh, of the new building, uh, of some of the work that was being done this week. And I, brick and the metal and... You know, just different things. And I posted a picture of us setting the old cornerstone. Resetting, if you will. And if you're not familiar with what it says, it says, you know, this plaque is given in honor of Elder John being an apostle sent by God. Da 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 da, whatever it said, in 1969. Founded the church. And uh, a gentleman got on there under that particular photo and he and he commented something and, and this is where I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to launch from here and because I know the spirit behind what he commented because I know who he is and I've seen other things he's commented to different things and he said unless I'm misunderstood I thought there were ever only 12 apostles and that you had to see Jesus in the flesh to be an apostle and I commented and I took it down because I realized I was throwing pearls in front of a pig. He was just going to stomp all over it. It'd be a, and I'd, me as the pastor, I'd look like somebody arguing with somebody that don't know any better. But I'll tell you what I posted, and I'll give you a little bit more before I took it down. I'm telling you this. I've got somewhere, I, I know it sounds like I'm soapboxing, even though I said I wasn't going. I said I wasn't going. And I said, no, an apostle, by definition, is one who is sent. That's what it is. Nowhere in the definition of apostle does it say you've seen Jesus with your eyeballs. Now, there were 12 apostles of the Lamb. And, if, and I bet this fellow that was doing all the preaching to me couldn't name six of them. Some of them got hard names to remember, I'll be honest with you. And I said, but also Judas, when he died, according to Scripture, it was prophesied, let his days be few and let another take his office. And so they had a vote in Jerusalem, and Judas's apostleship was replaced by Matt. So there's 13. And I said, but I guess we got to count Paul since he said, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. There's 14. But, G but Paul didn't see Jesus with his eyeballs. When he did see Jesus, he was blind. Amen. He didn't see Jesus with his eyes. You know, the Bible says no man has seen God at any time except he that is of the Father. He has seen him. If you'll get Jesus here, you can see him for who he is. That's just, that's side notes. That's side notes. Side notes. But to just prove the further lack of knowledge of Scripture, the Bible says in Acts 14 and 14, the apostles, Barnabas, Barnabas was, a, was, was an apostle. Not to mention the Bible said that Jesus sent out the 70. What did I tell you the definition of an apostle was? One that is sin. I wish we had better understanding of Scripture. And, and then I even said, if that would have been the case, now bear in mind the guy I said, I did this at 1030 and I took it down so we didn't even argue. I'm teaching you that to understand Scripture knowledge is important. I said, then what of the scripture of Ephesians 4 and 11? And he gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Did you notice in that scripture, missionary was never placed? Because a missionary is one that God has sent and is an apostle. 
doesn't matter if they're a missionary to Columbiana or if they're a missionary to Haiti. God sent them. And that scripture was written to Timothy at Ephesus and Jesus was dead. But he was still calling apostles. And I'm not saying this to be haughty. I'm saying this to prove a point. There's no doctrine that we stand on that we can't defend front to back. I'm going somewhere, I promise. There's not a single doctrine from cover to cover that I can't defend with two or three witnesses and let every word be established. Okay? Not a single doctrine. I don't think we here have a problem with doctrine. The baptism of the Spirit where we stand in doctrine is rock solid. I want everybody's attention. And if you're with me, I want you to say amen. Where we stand on water baptism by immersion in the only saving, matchless name of Jesus Christ, that doctrine is unmovable, and I believe it's right. It's right. And I can blast back to hell any false doctrine against that because I've got Bible for it. Brother, in the back, I've got Bible for that. I've got a Bible for that, sister, that nothing can move me off of that. Remember what my scripture text was. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and of breaking of bread and in prayer. I'm, I'm about to meddle because I'm preaching everything first that you're going to say amen about. I believe that the teaching of the original doctrine of the Godhead, that there is one God manifested in the flesh, preached unto the Gentiles, seen of angels, and received up into glory, there's no doctrine in this world that can beat it. You know, you know why, Brother Jess? Because 1 Timothy 3.16 says, without controversy. I can take that doctrine, and there's not a doctrine of God that can beat that. I can take you to the most sacred law and holy scripture of the Old Testament that said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is. Any other doctrine that confounds against that is a man-made doctrine, and the Word of God trumps it. Word of God trumps that. I'm, now, I'm still meddling. Y'all think I'm setting you up to set the hook. Sister, that doctrine is sound. The Bible says there's one Lord. One faith, one baptism, one God who's the father of us all. He's in us all, and he's through us all. There's no doctrine that can move it. There's no creed of man that can move that. I don't care if the Bible says, if any man come unto you preaching in any other gospel, then what we have preached to you, let him be a curse. There's three, four, five, or six. Some of you say, well, I'll never believe in that. Let me tell you, if you'll believe in three gods, you'll believe there's four. And there's a denomination out there, and I'm not calling names. Okay, you understand that I'm not. But there's somebody out there. I said, Brother David, now we were at a, at a, a Lloyd Nolan Parkway years ago, eating 9 o'clock break. I don't know if you remember this, working. And we're eavesdropping on somebody else's. And they were reading John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But that's not what they said. Buddy, if you know the Scriptures, nothing will trip you up. This lady read the Scripture to somebody and said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. And I got a, a David, and I said, What did you just read? And she showed me, I said, that's wrong, what you just read. I said, you just created another God. I said, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, who's the father of us all, in us all, and through us. That's, I'm not qu quoting a creed of man. I'm not quoting anybody's creed. I'm quoting scripture. Hold on, I'm still going somewhere. You can't trip me up on Scripture because it's written. That, Satan tried to trip up Jesus, he said, but it's written. 
I don't have to figure this out on my own because it's already been written. It's already been written. Thou shalt serve the Lord. Him only shalt you serve. But if he can get you to believe in four, he can get you to believe. I'll never accept the mark of the beast. I promise if you'll believe in three, you'll believe in four, you'll believe in five, and one day you'll take number six. But if you believe there's one God, and he's God all by himself, he's the creator of heavens and the earth. The Bible said my right hand hath created the heaven. If you believe in that, oh, they can't mess you up. I believe in holiness and separation. And I'm sorry the whole church ain't here to hear it this morning. But I believe in holiness. The Bible says follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And I know brother, I know you, you're from, not from Alabama. You're from you're Cajun country and I get it. Cajun country by way of West Virginia with a home in Ohio. So you've seen a lot of things. You like that Johnny Cash song, I've been everywhere. Amen. And that's all right. And, and I don't know how they do it really in Louisiana. I don't know how they do it in Ohio, West Virginia. All I know is how we do it right here. But I will tell you, there's no Louisiana spirit. There's no West Virginia spirit. It's the same God that worketh all in all. And I'm telling you, there may be some in the movement that ain't preaching it like they need to preach it can't help that there may be some that don't stand where they need to anymore there may be people that have let it go but I'm telling you I'm still holding on to the ship it may be torn and the sails may be tattered but I believe it's going to make it in I'm going to preach holiness until I die my great grandmother's last words for John I'm holding on to the doctrine I'm not letting go of holiness and separation you want to know what's wrong with the world today? You look around. I bought last night. I was buying something at the music store. And I don't pay attention to people's name tags because I struggle to learn everybody's name. And I've seen this guy's name, this, this man, a couple times, and I never thought anything of it. And the Lord said, did you see what his pronouns were? I said, I did see what his pronouns were. He's a guy. It's a him. It's a he. Because I seen him with my eyeballs. I didn't have to figure it out. She said his sign said he was a, a she they. Now he stole that from somebody else because he's not them and he ain't her. But you look around, you wonder where this stuff's coming from. It's because 50 years ago, churches didn't stand in the Word of God. They didn't stand in it. They didn't stand in it. The first thing that left was the church. Oh, we, the church let it go easy, though. We didn't, we didn't walk completely out of it. We just kind of let some things go. Oh, but the church is a light. The Bible says you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. When the church quit shining the light, the world even lost their way. Amen? The church is the light of the world. That's what the Word of God says. You are the light of the world. But churches quit preaching separation. Churches quit preaching a distinction of the sexes. And this is not a, a Pentecostal thing. This is not an apostolic thing. Everybody used to believe that a man looked like a man. Everybody used to believe that a woman looked like a woman. And it was understood. You didn't even have to preach it. We knew it. Although we've gotten away from the doctrine. But I'm telling you here today that I'm standing on the doctrine. But that's not my concern. Hear me. That's not my concern. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Okay, we got that. We got the doctrine. Sister Rachel, come help me. I'm about to bring it to a landing, I think. We've got the doctrine. Well, how do, well are you concerned about us losing the doctrine? No. I'm not concerned about us losing the doctrine because I'm preaching the doctrine. But the Bible, before the last pages were written, the Bible said there were already certain men crept in unawares that were not with us. People got mixed in that were not the church. And then the church fell into apostasy for years and years and years. Thousands of years. I'm not concerned about our understanding and depth of knowledge of Scripture. I, that's strong. Watch this. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in. Y'all got it. You 
got that. Oh, yeah, I don't have to quote the scripture to you. You know the scripture. You understand that. So what are you worried about, pastor? What could cause a discontinuance of the church? Jealousy could. Bitterness could do it. Disunity could do it. Personal agendas could sure do it. Here's another one. And there have been some areas in, in our church where even I had struggled with this. And I, I promise you we ain't going to struggle no more. Focus on performance and not the product. I don't care what it looks like. It better be right. Amen. Sister Bean talked in Sunday school. She said there are some that are not with us that were here a year ago. She said, but we're in a better place spiritually. And that's a fact. We're in a better place spiritually. We're in a better place spiritually because there were, there were some voices, and I love every one of them, and most of them will probably be back. That's the way it works. Criticizing this, and this singer should do better, and I wish we'd do this a little bit different. And If you let me do that, we'd, it would be better. Your personal agendas and your performance-driven motives are wrong. I would rather put somebody behind the microphone whose spirit is right than if you sing like a marsh bird and squawking all day because you've become as sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. You're just making noise. You're just making noise. God ain't hearing that garbage. I, I want us, everything we do, Music, I want it to be good. Brother Mike, when we pray for people in the altar, I want it to be, I want us to be, I mean, I don't want us our breath stinking. I don't want, you know, I don't want us like bumping into people because we have no self-awareness, knocking them over. I want us to be professional how we do that. Sister, when you're doing that skit at Addiction Recovery, I want it to blow their mind every week. You've already blown my mind. The skits, how you come up with it. I want you to do every week. I don't want us to be those so focused on performance that we're not creating the right product. Amen. I'm not knocking churches that do. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of bringing the lights down all the way black. I'm not. But, but it helps focus everybody. Yeah? It does probably. It makes the live stream look good. And I know there's some element of that. But we got to make sure that we're not fighting to be so much like the world. And so much like worldliness. That we stop being the church. Because what we're doing is we're lending ourselves to the attraction model. If we could attract somebody, we'll get them in the church. That's wrong. That's wrong. What builds the church is the conversion model. The conversion model. The Bible says it's not meat or drink, but it's joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. That's The kingdom of heaven is not the party. It's not a party. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. But if we could just attract them. No. No, no, no. Jesus said to Peter, whom do men say that I am? Y'all, thou art the Christ. He said, you're right. That's a truth. That's a biblical truth. And he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. You don't have to worry about building the church. You just do what God's told us to do. Be faithful. Show up. Be a disciple. Go make disciples. Live for him. Follow him. Fish for men. You do those things, he'll build the church. Preachers and teachers, and we got some great preachers and teachers in this church. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Do those things. Why? Why? Because the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itch and ears, and they'll be turned away from the truth and be turned unto fables. The pastor wasn't making up something. I just quoted scripture to you. Teachers, don't be so. So enamored by entertaining as you are discipling. Disciple. Make disciples. 
make disciples. If we get to the place, oh, if we had 130 last week. If we could just get 140 next week, oh, we'll be in revival. I'm sorry. That's important. And the Bible does say go out and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. But if all you are is performance driven, your product is not going to be as good. You've got to focus on the product. Focus on the product. Focus on the product. All right, I'm going to mess. I need, I need Brother Levi. Come up here and help me. He, he's going to be perfect for this. I'm trying to bring it to a close. And I'm, this, is going to, this is going to resonate with some of you here today. He's awesome. I, everybody can see you. How many of you remember that Pastor's an android man? All right, how many of you are Apple people? Raise your hand. Y'all been brainwashed. I'm just kidding, but you have. Uh, no, and, and the reason you say that is you like the you like the product. You like the product, right? It wouldn't matter to you. Say, say, I got the Samsung flip phone where it folds open. That's the coolest thing since sliced bread. You want it? Why? You know, say it again. I don't like it. Why don't you like it? Because apples are better. Now, you're wrong about that, but I'm going to let that stand. You know why? Because he knows the product of apple is right for him. Now, the thing about it is, the Word of God, there's no one product for one person. There's one. There's just one product. One product. And the product needs to be done right. Teach people. Thank you, buddy. I'll get you. I'll talk your mama into an Android, okay? The product. We got to focus on the product. Discipling people, teaching people how to make disciples. Let's stand together. And I'm going to show you right now as I'm getting ready to close what happens. How we get to a place where we don't continue anymore. You want to know how we do it? Throw the scripture up there for me. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. See, everybody thinks that, the, keep it up there. Everybody thinks that the first thing that goes is the doctrine. That's where you're wrong. The first thing that goes is the last thing that was mentioned. Prayer. Oh, I'm worried we're going to lose the doctrine. Don't worry about losing the doctrine. Worry about losing your prayer life. Worry about losing your prayer life. And if you keep your prayer life, you're probably going to keep the doctrine. Here's what happens. First you lose prayer. The next thing, look at that breaking of bread. The next thing you lose is fellowship individually with the body of Christ. You cut people out of your life. You cut people that are godly people out of your life. Instead of, instead of fellowshipping with that brother or sister at the church uh, that, that helped disciple you, now you're fellowshipping with somebody else. You're bringing in some things into your life that have no business there. You're not breaking. That breaking of bread is intimate fellowship. That's like being at somebody's house and fellowshipping. That's eating a meal with them. And you think, well, all that church is is just one big click. You need to find somebody in the church that you have something in common with. You need to find a friend. You need to find somebody that's got kids your age or, or that does the same thing for a living or likes to fish like you like to fish. And you need to strengthen yourself up with them. Why? Because the Bible says a two-fold cord is not easily broken. I have seen people in 12 years of pastoring backslide walk away from the doctrine first thing they quit doing was coming to an altar the next thing they did was ostracize themselves from the body the third thing they started doing was missing church they were no longer in fellowship and then they were out of the doctrine hear what I'm preaching to you I'm not trying to beat this over anybody's head I'm encouraging us to continue not just in doctrine but in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers oh that the church would still pray oh that the church would find an altar one more time Things will cause prayer life to become dead or lacking. I want you to be concerned. I want you to be concerned about having a kingdom-driven agenda and not a you-driven or a me-driven agenda. And there's last, one last thing I wanted to say. One thing that I've seen 
and pastor that will hinder tenuance of the church. Bitterness and jealousy in your spirit. Bitterness and jealousy in your spirit. If you've been wounded, if you've been hurt, been offended, I'm sorry. Sorry that I did it. I'm sorry that somebody did it. I'm sorry that it's happened to you. I'm sorry that life hurt. Sometimes life hurts, amen? Sorry it hurt. But don't let anything move you. The Bible says none of these things move me. Don't let anything move you. And if you have found yourself that you have drifted, it's easy. Return to prayer. Return to prayer. As she sings, Sister Rachel, go ahead and sing. I want to open these altars this morning to the church. I want to encourage you to make a commitment this morning to see the church continue. And that starts with prayer. And I can show you that it starts with prayer because that's where the church began. The church began in the upper room when they had gathered for prayer. 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 Come on, somebody. Step into the upper room. Step into the upper room. Climb up. Climb up from where you're at to the upper room. Climb into a prayer room. Climb into a prayer room. Oh, yes. My past, my past, it's over. My past is over. Is over. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Right now is the moment. Today is the day. I've been changed. I've been changed. I have waited for this moment to come. And I won't let it pass me by. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Hallelujah, Lord. I won't go back. I can't go back. To the way it used to be, your presence came and changed me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't think I made the announcement today. I don't know how. I missed it. But 6 o'clock today is our Marriage Built to Last group. Uh, if, you would like, if, you, if you've been coming, 
you're welcome to come. If you have not been coming, but you would like to come, you're welcome to come. We're going to be meeting at Beeswax at the very back pavilion at 6. We're going to have a cooler with water in case it hasn't quite cooled off. Uh, we want you to come. We won't be there long. I promise I won't be long-winded because I know it's maybe warm. Hopefully it will cool off a little bit. thought it would be nice. I know we have uh, with limited space right now. We don't have much for kids to do. I know it's hard to find a babysitter. Maybe you can bring a fishing pole for your kids or something. And it gives you something to help them do. Also, continue to pray for the building. Things are going tremendously. We have, uh, uh, they, you can't see it from the parking lot, but on the left side of the building, they've already formed up the sidewalks, and they'll, they'll work on those next week. Um, also, they've been running the storm piping in between the buildings so that we don't have, like, drainage issues later. Uh, Tuesday, they're going to, they've already cut, but they're going to dig up across the front driveway and lay a pipe so that the water daylights out into that big grass area, you know, rainwater and things like that. Uh, also, around Wednesday or Thursday, the four columns that are supporting the canopy, uh, the portico canopy, will be set. Uh, and then after that, the brick masons will come back, finish the last piece of brick work, and then brick around those columns. Um, so you can kind of see it starting to take shape. Also, be in prayer. Uh, should get it today. I talked to the gentleman yesterday. Um, we had our friend, the guy that we're I'm having price the interior framing, hanging of the drywall, framing of the ceilings. Uh, he's going to be giving me a price today. Uh, if everything goes well and he's where he needs to be and I've got enough money as I need to have, it's a little combination of both, um, he can start around Thursday, which means we'll get material delivered Wednesday. He'll go to work on Thursday, and uh, he thinks that he can have the building completely framed up in about three weeks on the inside, and then the electricians and plumbers and HVAC, they go to work doing their part, roughing in, and then once it's inspected, it just, it happens, it clicks. So, um, we are excited, amen. I cannot wait to get back to normal, get everybody back in the house of God, full ministries. I uh, would like to encourage you to remember Charity and Kevin. Um, I think after today, they should be on their way back in town. I think it's the way it is. Um, remember the Welch family, uh, Todd Welch. All right, let's remember Sister Judy, Brother Jess. All right, remember Joyce's grandson. Uh, if we could, let's remember Brooke. They're not here today. Um, trying to go across. I don't, the, the McCammons may be out of town today. Um, let's remember uh, Kay. Kay had been very sick. Let's keep her lifted up in prayer. Kay and Johnny, they may be out of town today too. So they're out of town, but she had been very sick. Um, I know I'm missing people, and I shouldn't even... Sister Brenda Daniels, let's remember her and Ginger. Again, if I miss anybody else, I'm going to leave just that one person out. So just let me stop now while I'm ahead. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. Greet our guests today in Jesus' name. God bless.